We're live. Okay. We're live. Just in time for round 10 zillion of thing. Okay, so <laughs> I had one ready to go, but I did uh, for the 15th, which I already did. So this is for February 16th. And I was just going to do the readings and, and I can't. I can't not do the whole thing. So here we are. Insight scripture for February 15th because I'll get caught up. It's, I just I can't not do the whole thing because it just seems wrong. So the inside scripture for February 15th which is so far behind is John 15 verses 9 through 17 and then the reading is Leviticus 19 and 20 and then we're going to be finishing Matthew excuse me Matthew 27 verses 51 through 66 and so Father as we continue in your word and we, we always come before you as humble servants, Lord, and we come to you with a humble heart. We ask that as we read your word and study it, Father, let it speak to us. Let us understand what we're reading, Father. Give us discernment and knowledge, wisdom and understanding, so that we can be the salt and light of the earth as God, Jesus has called us to be. That we can be light on that hill that we can share the word with others while there's time. And we'll read about it in this next reading about what Jesus did for us and how he called us to carry on his ministry. And Father, give us the tenacity, the strength, the endurance, the, and the knowledge to do that. I know that in your word it says you don't call the qualified, you qualify the called. And Father, I pray that you use us as willing vessels to reach as many as we can while there's still time, for I know time is so very short. And we do pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I don't say, and all God's people say, amen, because our old church used to say that all the time, and that drove me absolutely up the wall. Uh, but I always say in Jesus name some people say in your name but I have to say in Jesus name I'm not saying anything wrong with what they say I just personally have to say in Jesus name because it says Jesus said anything you ask in my name and he didn't say anything you ask in your name I didn't put a title to this oh I did okay I started to say I, mean, I know I'm losing my mind what mine when I was in basic training anytime the drill sergeant dropped us after we did a thousand push-ups or until he got tired whatever came first <laughs> we would say drill sergeant private Johnston or whatever my name was I think yeah, it was private Johnston at the time private Johnston request permission to recover and he'd be like recover private and we would get up and we'd get in the position of attention. Thank you, drill sergeant, for conditioning my mind, my body, and my soul, right? And then he would, he, every time, drill sergeant Avent, he looked like Huckleberry Hound. He was cool, though. He was cool. He was mean, though, but he was cool. He would say, what body? And you sure ain't got no soul or something like that every single time. And like one drill sergeant would have us count out each push-up as we did them. Another one didn't want to hear it. And if I remember one time I, we had to change our shirts and we were going to class. And I forgot to grab my notebook and pen or paper, uh, notebook and pencil or whatever out of my other shirt. So we get to class and I didn't have it. So that's an automatic 25 push-ups. Dang it. Drill Sergeant Moore is like, all right, Private, drop and give me 25. So I start knocking them out because I think it was Avent that didn't want to hear it. So after I did my 25, Drill Sergeant, Private Johnson requests permission to recover. I haven't heard you do one yet, Private. No! <laughs> I missed, I, I, I actually enjoyed it in the military. At the time, there were times when I hated it, and I was like, couldn't get out, wait to get out, but there were some good times, too. Um, I personally 
with the way things are and, and for the reasons that they're having a war and whatnot, I wouldn't join the military now to save my soul. But back then I was proud to do it for our country. I was proud to sign that blank check with my life. That's why I get so irate and so upset when people disrespect the flag or the national anthem. Yeah, our country has a lot of issues and it's done some crappy things to some people and to other countries especially. But don't disrespect the soldiers that fought for the freedom that you have to disrespect the soldiers that fought for the freedom that you have and so forth. You know what I mean? Okay, still got why I got off on that tyrant. Let's do this. John 15, 9 through 17. Hours before he went to the cross, Jesus gave us a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. John 13, verse 34. I don't actually need to look that up because I already know this, but it just said, just read it. The command to love others isn't new. In the Mosaic Law, God's people were to love their neighbor as themselves. Leviticus 19, verse 18. Tell me will you leave her alone? Um, beat this cat to death. Get off of her. Get out. Go. Go. Right in the face. Sorry, Toby. I didn't mean to get you in the eye. I'm sorry, baby. Hold on. I saw, you know, like, no, you can bite me. So we let our kitties out today. Shadow, my big, beautiful, fluffy, long-haired, gorgeous tuxedo. He didn't want to go outside. But I made him go outside in the backyard so he could get some fresh air. I had the kittens out there and I had Boo Boo out there. As soon as he hit the porch, I shut the back door. He tried to turn and run back in the house, but I'd already shut the door. So he dives off the back porch. I have both gates blocked so the kittens can't run out of the backyard, right? And James is on the side of the house watching the two bigger cats, Pinky and Patches. And they're trying to go underneath the house of the neighbor next door that just moved out. Shadow dives off the porch and he's on the side of the house, on the safe side of the house, the east of us. We're not the side where the neighbor that likes to trap cats and kill animals. And Shadow, he saw him running along the bushes, and I was like, Shadow just took off. I can't get him because I've got three cats back here that I'm having to watch, you know. And he's like, well, I've got them trying to go into the house. They're going to be fine. Leave the 99 and go after the one. He didn't, and we cannot still find Shadow. I think our neighbor that moved to ask us to watch their cat for like a week until they come back and get the cat, I think their cat has him trapped across the street in that empty house. I think they found a way in to that back building, and I think he has Shadow trapped in there. So next time Box comes over here, we're going to like pin his little narrow butt down somewhere, and then one of us going to run across the street and try to get Shadow to come out, because we can't find him. And this time, our neighbor is actually innocent, because none of them were home from either house when he disappeared, and he didn't even go their direction, so... Ah, please pray for my little kitty that he'll get to come home. And Box has been staying across the street, so I'm pretty sure he has Shadow holed up. Box is little. He's not even he's not even grown yet. Shadow is, so I don't know how Shadow is like kicking him a new one. It made me think of that when it was talking about love one another. Yeah. Anyway, which Christ reiterated was the second greatest commandment, Matthew twenty two thirty nine. However, Jesus introduced a new standard of love, which he emphasized in John 15, 12. Love each other as I have loved you. The standard is no longer how much we love ourselves, but how much Jesus loved us. Christ laid down his life. Let me see if that made my audio better. Better be better. Yeah. Oh, definitely. For us. He raised the bar from our self-love to his sacrificial love. John would later write, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And that's 1 John 3.16. And this was written by K.T. Sim. Yeah, I said I wasn't going to do all these, but they are kind of neat. They, they kind of go hand in hand with the reading, so that's kind of neat too. And the scripture for John 15.9-17 reads, love and joy perfected as the father loved me i also have loved you abide in my love 
If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Amen. In Jesus' name. Loving like Jesus. He was loved by all. Those were the words used to describe Giuseppe Berardelli of Cosnigo, Italy. I am not Italian. So I probably just destroyed that name and I forgot to look it up. That's okay because I still have yesterday's and today's daily bread to do, if I can speak. So we're just going to go with it. So this person was a beloved man who rode around town on an old motorbike and always led with the greeting, peace and good. He worked tirelessly on behalf of the good of others, but in the last years of his life he had health problems that worsened when he was infected by the coronavirus. And he eventually died in the hospital. Okay, we already know the truth about the Charlie Oscar Victor India Delta. Victor India Romeo uniform, Sierra, one niner. If this killed him, it's because he was going to die anyway of a serious terminal illness. CDC has come out, World Health Organization, all these people have come forward and said that that was all a bunch of hooey. So I'm just going to skip this story because it's already ticking me off. I refuse to be part of the misinformation and the lies about COVID Oscar Victor India Delta and one niner. Loved by all and love all. Do you get these those mixed up feel uh, mixed up sometimes? Why or why not? What might sacrificing for a friend look like today? Loving God, please help me to love you. I messed that up. Loving God, please help us to love as you love us. And and John fifteen thirteen. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Uh -huh. Yeah, 99% recovery rate. That's all I'm saying. Pandemic. Leviticus 19, Moral and Ceremonial Laws. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols, nor make for yourselves molded gods. I am the Lord your God. And if you offer a sacrifice of a peace offering to the Lord, you shall offer it of your own free will. It shall be eaten the same day you offer it, and on the next day. And if any remains until the third day, it shall be burned in the fire. And if it is eaten at all on the third day, it is an abomination. Oh, well, seeing as they didn't have refrigerators back then, well, uh, it shall not be accepted. Therefore, everyone who eats it shall bear his iniquity, because he has profaned the hallowed offering of the Lord. And that person shall be cut off from his people. Satan, stop. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field, nor shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. And you shall not glean your vineyard. <clears throat> nor shall you gather every grape of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. And you shall not swear by my name falsely, 
nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not cheat your neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of him who is hired shall not remain with you all night to until morning. You shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind. I shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. In righteousness you shall judge your, ju your neighbor. You shall not go about as a talebearer among your people, nor shall you take a stand against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your livestock breed with another kind. You shall not sow your field with mixed seed. Now, even though he's talking about this right here, nor shall a garment of mixed linen and wool come upon you. God's basically meaning that they need to keep their bloodline Israelites, you know, like they'll breed with the Canaanites or the, any of the others. That's what he's talking about there. If you read the study about the Ludo. 20. Whoever lies carnally with a woman who is betrothed to a man as a concubine and who has not at all been redeemed nor given her freedom, for this there shall be scourging, but they shall not be put to death because she was not free. And he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord, to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, a ram as a trespass offering. The priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before the Lord for his sin which he has committed. And the sin which he has committed shall be forgiven him. When you come into the land and have planted all kinds of trees for food, then you shall count their fruit as uncircumcised. Three years it shall be as uncircumcised to you. It shall not be eaten, but in the fourth year all its fruit shall be holy, a praise to the Lord. And in the fifth year you may eat its fruit, that it may yield to you its increase. I am the Lord your God. You shall not eat anything with the blood, nor shall you practice divination or soothsaying. You shall not shave around the sides of your head, nor shall you disfigure the edges of your beard. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead nor tattoo any marks on you i am the lord that verse 28 where it says you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead okay if if you watch that video i posted mercy from spoken the spoken gospel channel where they did an overview of the book of colossians and it's showing where the there was dark spiritual uh you know that the jews were taking the gospel and they were mixing it with stuff that wasn't right and there was also uh, some dark spiritual um, influence and it shows in there one guy was like or a girl I think it was was cutting herself and, and you see right here it says you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead nor tattoo any marks on you so they were actually, you know, the, the spiritual influence was having them do things. To, was having them do things that went exactly against the law of Moses. I mean, just straight up against it. So if you think about these things we're reading right here, right? And it's talking about you shall not taste, you shall not touch, you shall not feel, right? And it's talking about, yeah, so just think about these things. And if you go back and watch that video again, you'll see what the Colossians are going through. Do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry and the land become full of wickedness. You shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Again, familiar spirits. You need to go and watch that video. I'm going to put that link again in the overview of Colossians. 
Yeah. You shall rise before the gray-headed and honor the presence of an old man and fear your God. I am the Lord. And if a stranger dwells with you in your land, you shall not mistreat him. The stranger who dwells among you shall be to you as one born among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall do no injustice of judgment in measurement of length, weight, or volume. You shall have honest scales, honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest hen. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe all my statutes and all my judgments and perform, perform them. I am the Lord. Leviticus 20. Penalties for breaking the law. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Again, you shall say to the children of Israel, Whoever of the children of Israel, or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who gives any of his descendants to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from his people, because he has given some of his descendants to Molech to defile my sanctuary and profane my holy name. Whoa, why is my audio so low? That's not okay. I really think that Box Box is not fixed. He's not he is unneutered. And Bella is in heat right now. So I bet he did I bet he is uh keeping Shadow away. I'm gonna have to have Brandon call Misty and tell her to come get her dang cat. So Shadow can come home because the more I think about it, the matter I'm getting not okay at all. Uh, it's today Sunday. I to take my blood pressure pill. Just remember I hadn't taken my pills tonight. God. I am not taking any more of those allergy pills. Man, I, that's part of what was making me so sleepy, too. Hmm. Hold on. I swear. I swear I just read this. You know, I did this the last time I read this. Because I was like, I could have sworn I just read this chapter. Let me just make sure I didn't like put it twice or something. Let me see how 19 starts out. Go back. Huh. Strange. Ooh. Uh, okay. <coughs> Weird. Whatever. Okay. Just want to read this one. All right. Okay, verse 9. For everyone who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood shall be upon him. The man who commits adultery with another man's wife, he who commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. The man who... You see that? This is the law of Moses. The, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Now you remember when the Pharisees brought that that woman to Jesus and said, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery, right? And according to the law of Moses, she should be put to death, stoned, right? What did you say? Where was the man? Where was the man she was committing adultery with? Because he was guilty of adultery too, according to what we just read, right? Shows you right there that they were setting that woman up. Anyway, because even if he wasn't married, you know, doesn't, yeah, see, mm. people are shysters, I tell you. Anyway, 11, the man who lies with his father's wife has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. If a man lies with his, I know I've read this. I know I've already read this. I think I already did this video. And I just didn't upload it. Well, we're doing it again. Hallelujah. Lies with his daughter-in-law. Both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed perversion. 
their blood shall be upon them. If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. If a man marries a woman and her mother at all, it is wickedness. <sighs> they shall be burned with fire, both he and they, that they may be no wicked that there may be no wickedness among you. If a man may oh, come on, if a man mates with an animal, you shall surely be put to death, and you shall kill the animal. Oh come on, why does the animal have to die? It didn't do anything wrong, you didn't know. Oh, you shall shall kill the animal. If a woman approaches any animal and mates with it, it's disgusting. You shall kill the woman and the animal. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Gross. If a man takes his sister, if a man takes his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and sees her nakedness, and she sees his nakedness. It is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his guilt. If a man lies with a woman during her sickness and uncovers her nakedness, he has exposed her flow, and she has uncovered the flow of her blood. Both of them shall be cut off from their people. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, nor of your father's sister, for that would uncover his near akin. They shall bear their guilt. If a man lies with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall bear their sin, they shall die childless. If a man takes his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness, they shall be childless. You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and perform them that the land where I am bringing you to dwell may not vomit you out. And you shall not walk in the statutes of the nation which I am casting you out before you, which I am casting out before you. For they commit all these things, and therefore I abhor them. But I have said to you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has separated you from the peoples. You shall therefore distinguish between clean animals and unclean, between unclean birds and clean, and you shall not make yourselves abominable by beast or by bird, or by any kind of living thing that creeps on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. And you shall be holy to me, for I am the Lord, for I the Lord am holy, and have separated you from the peoples, that you should be mine. A man or a woman who is a medium or who has familiar spirits, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Okay. And then uh, Matthew 27, pick it up on verse 51. Let me just say, I have to blow my nose, I'm sorry. Oh, of course you're in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. Every time. Swear. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So, when Jesus died, and the earth quaked, when Jesus died, the veil was rent from top to bottom, and then there was a great earthquake, and the tombs were, were opened. So many saints' bodies were raised and went to paradise. But when after Jesus was resurrected, then they were uh, went into the holy city and appeared to many, because then they had their glorified bodies. Hold on, hold on. That's known as the first resurrection.
a day. I think that's known as the first resurrection. Because it says, And coming out of the tomb, after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Some word of faith movement teachers or some false teachers try to teach that Jesus died a spiritual death, went to hell, right, and was reborn. And you're like, what, what's going to happen with us? Right? But because he paid the sin debt, he died a spiritual death. Please don't believe them. That's not true. He became sin who knew no sin. That part's true. He, his flesh side paid the sin debt in full for the world. Right? But he didn't go to hell. No man has been to hell. See, that's, that's where Satan got fooled. Because he was fully God. That's why Jesus said, No man takes my life. I lay my life down and I pick it up again. So because he was fully man and fully God, the man side took the sin, you know, the God, you know, he, because he was God, he was able to take the sins of the, he was without sin, so he was spotless and without blemish, took the sins of the world upon himself and the flesh side of him, the man side of him, died to sin for the world, right? And he was able to be the perfect sacrifice because he had no sin in him. He went to the cross holy, he died on the cross holy, and he came off that cross holy. Jesus never stopped being holy. So I've heard some teach, and his name was Todd White. I am not even afraid to name names. He was trying to say that while he was on the cross, that Jesus became a liar. He became a child molester. He became a robber. He became, you know, all these different sins. No, he didn't. No, he did not. So... Be, be very, very careful about what you're taught. And no, Jesus did not die a spiritual death. He is not the first reborn. Paula White. Stay away from her teaching, too. They have wolves in sheep's clothing. They just want their money. Honey. Tanya. Never did like her. I really never did. There was just something about her I didn't ever like. I just never liked her. And then when I started studying online, because for a time, you know, we had to stay home and couldn't go to church, I started learning about a whole lot of people. No. Oh. I was heartbroken when I found out who the Word of Faith movement preachers were. I used to love listening to Don Hagee. He's one of them. I was so shocked. Anyway, I'm not trying to call out names. And no, that is not. Don't don't try to quote me. Oh, thou shalt not touch my anointed. That is not what that means. That's not what that's talking about. And I've got a whole video where I covered that with plenty of scripture and everything I needed to back it up. So, let's go on. After hanging on the cross for hours, Jesus cried out with a loud voice and died. Jesus' last words as recorded in other Gospels were, It is finished. His death was accompanied by some significant events. And I'm still confused about that, though. So when he died, tombs were open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the Holy City. Hmm. I may have to go to Spoken Gospel for those to, and other resources to, like my pastor and stuff. Ask them about that. Oh my god, he's such a dork. 
I'm sitting here trying to consciously listen for Shadow in case he's outside crying to come in. And he's down there making all kinds of stupid sounds. Hmm. I'm, so, I'm still thinking about these two verses. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find them out about this. Let's go on. I'm sorry. I'm just really like numb with that. God's presence dwelt in the Muslim. Yeah, I already talked about this. I remember now in the last video when I read uh, 27 through 50. That's right. So let's get past what I'd already covered. Some dead people resurrected. Knows this occurred after his resurrection. No, I know tombs cracked open with the earthquake. We know Jesus had the power to raise the dead. Okay, just like the thief on the cross, he said, This day, verily I say to you, this day you will be with me in paradise. When Jesus died, there many graves cracked open and the many saints went to paradise with Jesus. Right? Because it says that he ministered to the saints and set the captives free, right? So when he resurrected from the dead on the third day, those saints that he that that probably were in paradise that that came out of the graves when that earth when the graves cracked open and the tomb, you know, the tombs opened up and when he died, those are the ones that when he resurrected, they resurrected with him. Just like in the in, in the rapture when Jesus comes in the clouds and he calls the shout of an archangel those who were dead will meet him in the air and those of us that remain that are still alive will be caught up and meet them in the air right and then in the second coming the graves will crack open again see you know in, Jer in Jerusalem uh, in the east gate that where the Messiah is going to be coming right the second advent They've got all these graves there because, of course, you know, they like, well, he ain't going to be able to go across those graves. So, we're, Satan said, we're going to just keep Jesus from coming. We're going to keep the Messiah from coming back because he can't go across these graves. He's silly. He's so silly. Does he not know that when Jesus comes, those graves are going to crack open and that's going to be the second resurrection? Oh, anyway. So... We know Jesus has the power to raise the dead. Like Lazarus, who we haven't met yet, these people were called out of their tombs. The resurrected appeared to many people in the city as evidence to Jesus' own resurrection. Verse 55. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, verse 56, among whom were Mary of Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee, which is Salome. What could prompt a hardened Roman soldier to confess Christ as the Son of God? Apparently it was the same thing that changed the mind of a thief who mocked Christ one moment and confessed him the next. Matthew records the names of three women present at the scene, Mary Magdalene, Mary of Magdalene, Mary, mother of James and Joseph, which is Jesus' mother, I believe, right? No? Yeah, no? I don't know. And Salome, Zebedee's wife, mother to, of James and John. John and Mark's gospel gives us a bit more information. Mark 15.40 reveals James and John's mother's name, Salome. John 19.25 records the presence of Jesus' mother, Mary, and informs us her sister, Jesus' aunt, was there. It's difficult to imagine how horrible the scene would have been for them to observe. And like, yeah, God, could you imagine? I can't, I can't. Verses 57 through 60. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And the chosen, I bet you anything, this is Yusuf. The Pharisee Yusuf. Because that's how you say Joseph in Hebrew. Yusuf. Yusuf. 
sitting here trying not to eat sweets and James goes to the store the other day and comes back with this massive box of chocolates because they were on sale, half price, for Valentine's Day. And he knows I'm going to freaking eat them. Okay. Anyways, verse 57. When it was evening, there came, oh, I said that, and 58. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. And verse 61. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The text now introduces us to a new disciple. Mm -hmm. Joseph of Arimathea. We don't know a whole lot about Joseph, but we know he was rich and had a tomb. Luke 25.30 says he was a member of the council which is probably a reference to the Sanhedrin. The Jewish council comprised of Pharisees and Sadducees. Joseph's action in this passage may have endangered his position on that council. Joseph went to Pilate and asked to take Jesus' body off the cross for burial. Keep in mind, they rushed their deaths by breaking the legs, right? Because <clears throat> they couldn't have them up there on Passover. Now oh, got it. And ordinarily, dang it, they would have just pitched the bodies outside of town and let the animals take care of them. And that's what would have happened to Jesus. And if you read the scriptures of the Messiah, you know, no, he didn't say that, but, but he was taken out of, the, out of town and killed. Just like that par parable of the vineyard owner, when he finally said he sent, he kept sending servants, and he finally sent his son. Mm -hmm. Remember? That's when he went to. It took him. I should not have eaten that chocolate. I am so sorry. They took him out of town to go Golfa. Mm -hmm. Let me just get this. That was caramel. <laughs> caramel and dentures do not. Dentures, I said, do not go well. Anyway. Good Lord. And also, remember we read uh, Isaiah 53 12? Get that, get that. Proverbs. Right. T fire. So, um, yeah. Well, I can see better from having glasses on. And that kind of tickled me still. Every time I go into the Old Testament, and I just flip right to what I need. I think about that, that Pastor said last Sunday about people not being able to find books fast in the Old Testament. I'm getting pretty fast at it because I'm in it all the time now. That's yeah, all good. Anyway. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercessions for the transgressors. Okay, so, maybe it's in Psalm 22, but I know somewhere it talks about where he, you know, in like 53, 12, it talks about he, he, you know, with the transgressors, but it also talks about him being buried with the rich. Okay, well, we'll just go on, because last time he actually mentioned it in here. Um... Without objection, Pilate gave his permission. Joseph took Jesus' body and laid it in his own tomb. This wasn't a grave like you'd find in the modern cemetery. It was a tomb cut out of a rock formation. A great stone was rolled in front of the mouth of the tomb to keep animals and grave robbers out. Mary Magdala and the other Mary, probably the mother of James and Joseph, accompanied Joseph at the tomb. Verses 62 through 66. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said, while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. 
So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. The day of preparation was the day Jesus died, Mark 15:42, Luke 23:54, and John 19:14. The chief priests and Pharisees approached Pilate and asked him to set a guard at Jesus' tomb for three days to ensure no one stole his body and claimed he resurrected. It is interesting that the chief priests and Pharisees remembered Jesus' word about rising again, but his own apostles didn't. I wonder if it was by God's divine guidance they remembered Jesus' prophecy, because their actions, although designed to stop squelching any rumors of resurrection, ended up strengthening the case for the resurrection. Pilate gave the order for the tomb to be secured. The text says the tomb was sealed. The seal would have indicated it if the tomb had been opened. It is difficult to know the exact nature of the seal, but it was probably done with wax. When the stone had been rolled into place, a short piece of rope could have been sealed on either end, one to the stone and the other to the tomb. That way, if the seal was pulled too hard by someone attempting to roll, <laughs> roll, R-O-L-E, he says so, to roll the stone away, the hardened wax on either end would break and provide evidence of the break-in. The body missing would do that too. Oh, is that the end? Oh, yeah. Yep, that was it. Oh, okay. So we're done with that. Yeah. All right. That's all of Mark from Matthew 27. Don't say it. Bye bye. Okay, so that precludes. Is that the right word? That ends uh, February 16th reading, uh, daily bread reading. So I'll go ahead and end this, and then I will be back here, I promise, in just a few minutes, as soon as I set up yesterday's reading, and at least get tomorrow's or yesterday's done. And then tomorrow I can get caught up for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, be back.